Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellums, Greeny Flix Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Yes, today is a different type of video for my channel. I suppose you could link it to travel because when you travel you have to eat and this is a cooking segment. And today I'm going to make one of my favourite dishes. I haven't actually done this during a camping episode but I think it's a goal. I will have to do it soon. It's called in Latvian the Latvian name for it is Gallas Pankuka. So that is a meat pancake. Uh, it's also known in German as Come Morgen wieder. And if you translate that directly, it's Come Again Tomorrow. And why is it called that? Well, it's all about using leftovers, reformulating them, and then making a new dish that is even better than the original. Okay, let's get on with the cooking segments. Okay, well let's look professional here and uh, we'll put on my apron. Alright, so the first task is what are the ingredients? So this is something that we had prepared the evening before. We had some roast lamb and in this case I actually did it on the barbecue. It was uh, butterfly lamb on the barbecue and leftover lamb. So we need that, that's one component. We will need an onion, it can be a brown onion or a red onion. We will need some stock, it could be chicken stock, in this case here I've got beef stock. So they are the main ingredients there. You will need a meat grinder, one that doesn't mulch the meat completely into puree, but one that actually makes sort of a, like minced meat, okay, that's what this is, this is a, an old cheap Chinese cast iron one. Um, I guess better would be a stainless steel one. I might have to get one of those. We'll need a pan, obviously. Ah, the pan. The pan is for something else. We will need a, oops, we'll need a saucepan. A saucepan. Um, and you'll see why. And then we'll be making some crepes as well because once we've made all the mince, we'll be putting the mince inside a crepe and then we'll be folding the crepe over and then we'll be having the finished product. So from a crepe point of view, we'll be needing milk, plain flour, caster sugar, and a couple of eggs. And then we'll be using the pan to make the crepes and then we'll also be using the pan to finish off the pancakes as well. All right, so the first task is to actually uh, take your meat, either cut it off the bone if you've made a roast lamb, or just uh, cut up these pieces into manageable pieces so they can go into the grinder. Now as it is, these are actually all a good size. Look, it's uh, for this amount of meat, one onion is uh, enough, I would say. And um, just you know, cutting up and getting rid of the outside of the onion. And then the rest of the onion we can just put through the mincer together with the meat. Just go with the meat then. So that's all ready to rock and roll. The next task will be to mince all that. What I find is you can attach this to benches, but then the bench usually just isn't, it's either too thick and you can't get this on. I find you just get a large breadboard and attach the grinder, the meat grinder to that. Check that it's all clean, this I have already cleaned. It's ready to go. And you can see how this works. It's just basically you just wind that through. It pushes the, uh, the meat through. There's a little grinder cutter and that just spins on there. And that's how it does the mincing. You can carry a grinder, meat grinder like this with you in your camper van. So yes, you can actually do this out in the bush. And so that would be my plan eventually. All right, so simple process of just putting in the meat, just watch your fingers, and then turning it, 
and you can see that the meat starts coming through. And slow and steady as she goes, it's not a race, you know, by the time I get through this, it'll probably be just a few minutes. Well, this is going very quick and very easy. So I've got a few more meat pieces left, so at this stage I'll just put through the onion as well. Again, you just have to be careful that you don't get your fingers caught up. But again, being manual, it means that if something goes wrong, you can quickly stop. As opposed to electric, it can be really quite dangerous. But this way I get um, quite a coarse grind. And it's just the right texture. I leave a few pieces there of the meat so that once I've done the onion, I can push the onion through with the leftover meat. And then to get the rest of the meat out, I just put in a piece of bread and uh, that pushes out the meat. You can use uh, other meats, you can use beef, you can use pork as well in Camorgan Vida or Gallus Pankuka. And this quantity, so we've just got a sort of a bowl of minced lamb plus onion. And this is probably would make, I'm guessing about eight parcels of, uh, of pancake, meat pancake, uh, which is you know good for four people, two, two parcels each. And once you've made it, you can always freeze them as well. So you don't have to eat it all at once. So it's another reason for uh, doing them at home. But then if you're on a campsite and you're making this, uh, with leftover lamb from the night before, from the campfire, from the Dutch oven. Oh, it's really fantastic. Right, so the last bit of, uh, to get the last little bit of meat out, just some bread. And once you see the bread coming out, there yeah, you can stop. The bread just makes it easier to clean the unit as well. It serves no purpose. You've got some bread into the mix here, it makes no difference. Again, just be careful with your fingers. So, just a little bit of bread starting to come through. And that's it. So now we have our ingredients for the filling. This I can get rid of now. I'll do the washing later on. ingredients into our saucepan. Now, the meat is pretty dry, yes, some, there's some moisture in the onion, but just like that it's going to be too dry, so what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of moisture and a little bit of seasoning. And the stocks can be quite salty, so you don't necessarily want to go too heavy on these. Uh, for that amount, uh, maybe one heaped teaspoon is probably enough if you're not quite sure you can just go a little bit more that's fine and again for this amount that we've got here you can see we've got uh, an amount of uh, minced lamb so you get some hot boiling water and I would say a half a mug is probably enough. You don't want too much moisture, but you can always, uh, if you add too much moisture, when you heat this up on the stove on a, on a low heat, if you just keep it on the stove longer, then you can evaporate the moisture if you've got too much. If it looks a bit dry, then you could always add a little bit, bit more hot water as well. So all I'm going to do is just dissolve as much as I can the uh, stock. <laughs> And then you just stir it in to your mix here. That's it. And then there's quite a bit of moisture in there. Voila, you can see how the meat's absorbed all that moisture. There's sort of half a mug there, so it's just a mug, like, what's that? A mug's about one and a half cups. So it'd be half of that, maybe three quarters of a cup. There you go, so it's a bit of moisture in there, but once we heat that up, a lot of that moisture will come back out again. And that's, that's sort of a right consistency, which will then go into the meat, into the crepe. There you go, so 
that's all ready to go. And that I'll put onto the stove later on to heat up. Okay, so the next task will be to make the crepes. Everyone no doubt has their own recipe for pancakes, but I will show you mine. So, I just find it's easier to start off with two cups or mugs that are about the same size. And I will use one cup or mug of uh, plain flour and the other one of milk. And then I'll add those together. And for each one of these mugs, I use two eggs in my crepes. So that's pretty straightforward. So I just uh, dish out the flour. Don't bother sifting the flour. I find through the mixing process I can get it into a, a nice mix anyway. So you can see I've got almost a full cup there. And then I just grab some milk. One full cup of milk. Two eggs. So I'll smash those in. And mix those in straight away. Chef experts, uh, probably criticizing at this stage, would be saying I'm not quite doing it right. But anyway, it doesn't matter because you don't need many skills. Um, like in all cooking, you just need to give it a go and then do your very best. So that's what I'm doing. Just keeping it really straightforward and simple. Okay. Once uh, you've smashed all the egg and mixed it up, you can use a fork or you can just use uh, a wooden spoon is also fine. And it does the trick quite well. You can add sugar to taste. You don't need to add sugar. I like to add a bit of sugar. And I'm just adding a full tablespoon. <sighs> Extra sugar, never go too much sugar. <laughs> Okay, so that's that, and you can just mix that in at this stage so that you've got a nice egg sugary mix. Now if you want to add some salt and or some extra seasoning, that's also good. Uh, you don't need to. If you're adding, if you're cooking in butter for example, there's a lot of salt in butter anyway, so again. It's you add to taste, season to taste, as they say. Okay, and then um, you can just put in the flour. Um, I find if you just put in the flour, half, whatever, to start with. And then you can sort of just blend the flour into the egg. And you get a nice consistent paste and then it's easy to sort of uh, stir and get rid of all the lumps as you go. Just add the rest, add a little bit of uh, moisture. Anyway, so uh, basically I just have to mix away here and get rid of all the lumps. So the more gradual, gradual you are in adding the milk, the easier it is to actually blend in the flour so you don't get any lumps. Anyway, a bit of elbow grease, get rid of the lumps eventually. I think I'm getting pretty good at getting these lumps out. It's starting to smooth that quite nicely. And then we'll be able to add the rest of the milk and we should have the right consistency. It's a beautiful day. I went out for a motorcycle ride this morning around uh, eastern suburbs of Sydney, around the harbour, Bondi Beach. It's very nice. I'm not sure photograph. <laughs> Somebody here. <laughs> Always get a, some photography in there somehow. Well, I suppose videoing is photography, isn't it? Now, how do you know whether you've got the right consistency? I have a secret for that, and I'll show you all the secrets. So, what I find is once you've got the right mixture, you just 
take some of that, just drop it like that. And then you see whether the bubbles come up. If the bubbles come up through the mixture, you've got the right consistency. If there's no bubbles, then it's too thick. If it splashes all over the place, it's too thin. Okay, let's see how then. So you can see, just see those bubbles come up. Bubbles. You can see the bubbles like that when I'm just sort of pouring. Then we've got the right consistency. Now for the fun part. Now to do the crepes. <laughs> the secret. All right, so we moved location to the stove and I uh, just need to set the camera up and then we'll be ready to make the crepes. So the first things first is we can get our meat mix here onto the stove. I'll just basically heat that up and I'll just put that on small heat. So while I'm doing the crepes, this is uh, just cooking away, heating up, and I'll just give that a stir every now and then. First pancake is always a tricky one. Crepe, I should say. I'm using salted butter today, and uh, hence I didn't add salt before, so there should be enough salt. Okay, so this is a standard size ladle. I find that's probably enough one of these. I've got another one here. Um, I'll probably use this one here. I think they're probably the same size, but anyway, I'll use this one. One of those is enough for one crepe. Too much noise. And we'll put on the first break. You can make your pancakes and your crepes and your guys and cookers. Um, a variety of size, you can make them really small, you can make them large. It is dependent on how big the crepe is. I'm using plain flour because I don't want it to rise too much. I like it flat and that way it's easier to fold and bend and whatever. Uh, the eggs help to keep the pancake supple and, uh, and fold easily. Once you see the bubbles starting to come up, a combination of things, you can see that it's going to probably be pretty close to, uh, to right. See like that? And then you can just Flip it over straight away and you got a nice crepe. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. If it's too hot, you can just turn it down a bit. And this is where the trick of the trade comes into it, just getting the right temperature of the pan. All right, so you don't need much because these are gonna be heated up again. So you can see how we still got, and it's a little bit brown and that's it. So that's the first crepe. Swirl it around. So just by taking the pan on and off the flame, you can actually control the heat of the pan. So you don't end up burning the, uh, the butter. Put a nice sizzle to it. Might just turn it up a little bit. And you can see how I'm spreading it out. So if I get a nice thin crepe. That's the crepe there. Beautiful. And if you make it nice and thin, it means that it heats up really evenly straight away and you get a beautiful crepe. It's all in the crepe. You can see the bubbles are starting to come through here. And the colour is changing across the crepe, so you know that all the, the liquid is now solidified. Once it's all solidified, then you can straight away go underneath and give it a flip. Got this a really nice colour to it. Again, you don't want to go too dark because the crepe is going to get, once you put the meat in there, it's going to get cooked again. All right, so while this is happening, I'll just give this a stir. And that's I've got a really nice um, aroma coming off the meat now. And we've just got that on a small flame. You can see there's a lot of steam coming off. 
so the, the moisture is evaporating at the same time. And that should be fine. I've got that on the lowest heat, probably keep that going for a few more minutes. And then you can literally, if it's the right consistency, you can just turn it off. And you can see we've got a bit of a production line going now. And everything should be hunky-dory. All right, so I'll continue with the clips and then I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, well, we're getting close to the final stage. So, one cup of flour and one cup, I suppose these are mugs, uh, one mug of milk makes six crepes. So I will make another batch because I think I've got too much meat and any leftover crepes can be used for dessert, for pancakes, or jam, or sugar, and lemon, whatever. All right, so we've got our crepes all ready to rock and roll. That beautiful, beautiful. And then we've got our mix here. Yeah, as you can see, it's all ready to go. And that's looking really nice, still hot. And then it's really just a simple matter of taking a spoonful and plugging it smack in the middle of there. So a heaped spoon and you can sort of experiment and then you just fold it one way and then uh, fold over again and you're making basically a really nice parcel. Now because these are still hot then you just turn it upside down and put it on a cold plate and look at that. That's a ready parcel ready to go. Very nice, eh? Now that will cool down and all you have to do is then put this onto a hot pan again with some butter and just brown it off. Now if it's already warm like this it will be plenty hot enough to eat straight after you sort of brown both sides and in the browning process that last part of cooking actually then makes it nice and crisp on the outside here, crisp on the other side and it's that combination of textures and flavours. Hmm, it's to die for. Okay, so the next one. So I'm sort of using one and a half again. You're going to sort of experiment with how much meat you put on the inside. Beautiful. Oh, well, I might have just enough, so that's three. So we'll probably get six out of this. So I won't make another batch. And you can see I've just got enough for two more. So divide that into half, which is just right. There we go, we've got six beautiful meat pancakes, Gallios Pankoki, um, Camorgan Vida, come again tomorrow. So all we're gonna do is just put it on a pan, brown it up nice and evenly, add some tomato sauce afterwards, you can have some salad with it, whatever. Cranberry sauce is really nice, a really thick cranberry, we get the cranberries on the side as well, and that's it. At this stage, if you don't want to eat them all, you can actually wrap them up in cling wrap and each one separately and put them in the freezer. So you've got them a parcel to eat next time. Okay, we're at the exciting part of the day, which is dinner time. All right. So I had made my galis pankukas a bit earlier, which is great. Now, if they were frozen, then you, the easiest way to thaw them out is just to take out of the freezer and put it in the fridge and then let it thaw out within the fridge over a period of, you know, eight hours or whatever. Um, so I'm going to put these away because they're going to be eaten tomorrow. But I have taken two out. Now, because they've been in the fridge, they are quite cool. Now, I could put them on the pan and then just cook them up on the pan and the heat will go through. The other choice is just to put them in the microwave for um, 30 seconds, which will then just warm up the insides a little bit and then I'll just finish it off on the pan. That's probably it. I don't have any cranberry jam. Sauce, but I do have tomato sauce, which is also a good option. Okay, so that's good. That's fine. 
this takes a bit of the cool out of the fridge and then we'll get to the pan. A bit of butter on the pan. Yummy. Okay. And um, man, it looks nice and hot. Put that side down first because that will hold everything in place. Nice. So I've got a medium heat and that will uh, crispen up the, the crepe perfectly. And it's that combination of a crisp outer on the, uh, on the crepe with the warm insides. Oh, so much anticipation. Cook. And then I'll flip it over and then it'll be ready to serve. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Look at this, it's nice and crisp on the outside now. That actually is holding its form really well. And we'll do the other one as well. Beautiful. So you can imagine doing this on a campfire or camp stove. And then having these beautiful dice sprinkles. Okay, there's my heat. Just crisping that up and I'll be ready for serving. How exciting. Finished product, how exciting. All right, so it's just a matter of taking it off the pan and then placing it on your plate. Now, I'm gonna leave that on the pan here because that will keep it nice and warm while I finish devour one go. And then again, you add seasoning, look at this, and that's actually quite nice. Will my expectations be met? Here we go. There's the meat, you can just see there's meat. The sauce. Mm. Man, that is so good. Yum. I'm gonna have dinner. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If it's the first time to my channel, then uh, please do subscribe, press notifications, you'll be notified when the next video is out. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Yummy. There you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. Bye.